Dude, I'm dead. Are we recording? Nah, nah, we recording, homie. Yeah. Nah, we, we fucking good. Let me just grab my shit. <laughs> Let me hit the bleezy. One time for Legends of Chamberlain. Should have go. gotten a season three, but it's all good. No. Bro, why is it we are the only ones that's ever watched that fucking show, bro? Are we literally the only two people that watched it, and that's why it got canceled? Like, I'm really, <laughs> like, trying to understand why no one knows this show. Because like, it pisses me off almost. Like, it's such an amazing... Bro, it's... No, nah, we're funny. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think I think it's just... It's just it's a certain type of humor that goes on. If you guys never watched Legends of Chamberlain, there's clips on YouTube and get a feel for it. Go check got out canceled. my track, Legends. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Don, Don got inspired by that show to make a track. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that shit got canceled. You know, look, bro. This is the way I see... This is the way I'm seeing shit, bro. If Big Mouth... Can keep on fucking having seasons, bro. Mm. Bro, how the fuck? How the fuck can Legends and Chamberlain can I get a season three? Big Mouth started just Netflix. I think if today, if Legends would have came out on Netflix, it would be a whole different story. But I'm just saying, like, like it's it crazy. It's still gone. It's because it came out on TV. It premiered on TV first. Yeah, but you know what? Also, too, Comedy Central owned the IP, so they're not trying to like. Oh, they canceled well, it, and like they're not necessarily trying to like. Do anything with that IP. Because if the IP was given to the other person that was writing the shit, one of them was called Joshua. Uh, or Josiah, I mean. I- I'm pretty sure he would have taken his IP to another, like, streaming giant, right? But I think because Comedy Central... It was Comedy Central. Uh, they're just, like... They're they're investing in other IPs, right? Like, to just bring that in that traffic, but... but it, it was basically, like, the Hood South Park, bro. Hood South Legit. Park. Legit. Okay. Hood South Park. And nobody's seen it. I mean, I've never seen it. Bro, so. they predicted Kobe's death. What? No, like, legit, bro. Like, there's an episode where Kobe's in a helicopter, and it crashes into uh, their school, and he dies. God. Rest in peace to go, by Yeah, the bro. Way. Like, it was, it was... They were heavily marketing this on Comedy Central. Because I remember the way we came across it. And we're going to just end it, like, real quick. I don't want to talk about this too much. But uh, pretty much, like, we were watching new episodes, I believe, of South Park. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think like they were just, uh, Comedy Central they were just heavily marketing this fucking show and it happened to come across a South Park episode we just got done watching and we're like well, fuck it like this seems interesting and, and we're then high as fuck, bro. yeah so it, it just kind of like we were set up for it What's like it pretty well you? Legends of Chamberlain Heights Legends of Chamberlain Heights I'm gonna have to look that up later yeah it's I mean if, if check it out I, I think if you're into like hood humor like mm. you know t- that that kind of stuff like like the, you like Boondocks. Like you heard Honestly, of the I, I, I've seen it, but I've never like watched. It's it It's like, like that. it's like give, give it. It's like kind of has like that comedy approach to it. Where like it's, gotcha. it's like it's, it's it, the Boondocks with South Park. That's exactly what it is, bro. The animation. There, there you, go. you go. If they had a baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. legit. Boom. That's what it is, bro. And it's it's just funny because it takes place like in high school, like high school kids type shit. Mm-hmm. So like it's that whole atmosphere, and it's just what you would think in high school. Like they just they just up it times like a thousand. Times. Like imagine okay. you and your buddies, like you're on a basketball team. You guys think like you guys are feeling yourself. Like yeah, we're like some sick ass basketball players, but you guys are always getting benched every game. Why is that me? I, I was <laughs> I, I was on my high school basketball team. Bear in mind, I'm short, so like they oh, they just oh, they just put me on there because they felt bad for me and like I would just sit there and watch them Put play. Your handles, yeah. No hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no, I was keeping that bench warm, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, so were you playing sports when you were younger? Like no. basketball heavily? Or were you were you an athlete like playing a bunch no, of sports? Honestly, they just did that because they felt bad for me. Cause like, okay, not to get all like sad on you guys. No, but who was so bad for you? Like team my, or my counselors. Or your counselors. My my counselors in the school itself, because my dad had passed away that year, my senior year. Oh, and yeah. so they they kind of felt bad for me. So they're like, you need to do something. You need to go out there and like mm-hmm. like do stuff. Like so they put me on the basketball team and I was just sitting there like <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you weren't even athletic before that? Nah. Like, it was just like... Hey, you're, the mm-hmm. fact that you're on the basketball team, you could call yourself an athlete, fam. Right? No, oh my That's God. your life. You were an athlete, Dude. dog. Yeah. Right? Why didn't they sign me, bro? Like, what, what's going on, man? This is what you tell everyone. You're like, yeah, I could have gone pro, but, you know, my my, my skateboarding actually <laughs> yeah, stopped for, me from for going... For real. See, that's, that's what you tell people. That's bro. the story right that's there. That's the story, for sure. Messed up my, my knee, bro. Yeah. That's it. And it's all true. There's no there's no false statements there. Mm, that's, yeah, <laughs> and, you know, I never realized... And I think I speak for both of us. Like, I think... Like, at a young age, like, starting at 10 or 11, I was very invested in sports, specifically mm-hmm. soccer. And like, a lot of the time, you know, uh, of my life as a teenager, like, was spent, like, for soccer activities, like, training, going to games, tournaments, uh, even at school, like, just participating in the high school team and mm-hmm. just uh, committing your time to all that. Uh, even before the DJing, like, I started doing the DJing seriously, like, in high school. 
But before that, I think uh, like sports was like my my first like main thing. Like I woke up, I eat, sleep, breathe uh, soccer, bro, or football for the for the British, bro. I ain't trying to offend y'all. Football, yeah, <laughs> football, homie. Damn. <laughs> yeah, no, I I mean I used to play sports. Don't get me wrong. Like during recess and stuff when I was younger with my my family, like I, you know I'd go out and play soccer, play basketball, but I never took it seriously. It was it was never something that like really piqued my interest. Like my dad was a big sports fan, but it just never. It never stuck with me, honestly. You I think I, I I lean more towards like skateboarding and stuff. So okay, so you, you skateboarded then like throughout. Um, yeah. So I think like stuff like that's a sport, bro. It's in the Olympics. It's a sport. Skateboarding is a sport. That's right? true. So, Street league. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. don't even like get that shit. Like, but I think uh, you know how in high school and like when you apply at colleges and stuff, they always want to make sure you're doing like extracurriculars and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Uh, I think being into sports at a young age and like continuing that through high school is a very good thing. Cause it teaches you how to not only focus on school or like a side, like say your job, right. Substitute school for your job, but then it still gave you that extra discipline to be like, okay, but I could still after my job, go exercise or go do something yeah. else. And like do the way things. I see it is I diverted my energy instead of playing sports I divided, diverted it into music. Like, that's how I see it. Like, now I can go to work every day and be like, all right, I can still go home and put in, like, X amount of hours into music or whatever the fuck case it is because, like, I just have that discipline from being in sports because, like, it, I think when college asks asks you for extracurriculars, they want to know that you could do more than just the schoolwork, you know? You could put in, like, extra hours because you know how to do it already from doing something else. Like, mm-hmm. I think that's why they push sports on us and, or tell you to go do something else like when you're younger just to get that like that whole duality of being working but then also you can still do other shit you know that makes sense i mean like for me definitely i, I think music played a big part you know like because I, I was never into any of that stuff but the one thing that i've always had a passion for was music and i i gotta give it up to my mom for that one because like she she introduced me to a bunch of stuff like Metallica, Michael Jackson, you know, all the, you know, corridos and stuff like that, all the Mexican stuff, like country. Like she showed me all, all kinds of music, um, gangster rap, like, you know, Tupac, all that stuff. Dr. Dre. She, by the way, she says Dr. Dre's my dad and Elvis. So I, I don't know who it is, but it's one of them. So, but, um, but yeah, so like that, that, that always like played a big part in my life. And then, in high school, again, since I wasn't doing any of that stuff, I got really into like, like big room stuff. So like Dead Mouse and like you know the Cascade and stuff like that. And that's when I ended up finding out about raves. Back in like 2009, I used to watch the trailers on my phone and cry in my bed. Like I wish I could be there. You saying you wish you could be there because like uh, because of the age restriction or like just like age restriction? You being young, not, like kid, like you know, parents not like letting you out. Because that was my that was my uh, barrier too. Like. Wanting to go to raves. And I think a lot of people, too, that I talked to, my first year, like, being 18, going to my first rave at EDC, we all shared the same frustration. Like, oh, we were watching EDC trailers or rave trailers when we were freshmen. And we literally had to wait, like, three to four years till we became legal, legally to enter as Mm -hmm. 18-year-olds, like, ravers. And uh, that's cool for you to tell me that because I've always felt like there wasn't that many people that were, like, having that anticipation. I always felt like... I don't know about you, Robert, but for me, when I was in high school, like since freshman, like I was always anticipating, like you know, my graduation gift when I when I graduate is EDC, and uh, Ooh, that's a good one because like you know I was uh you had to be eighteen like around this time, like I was a freshman in twenty ten. They had just made that rule, so I had to wait, and so yeah, I mean, when did, when did DJing come along for you? Because you're saying uh mm. you started getting into raving around high school. Uh, did I the DJing happen around the same time too? Or was that after? Honestly, that was that was later on. Um, I. I didn't get into like DJing and stuff like that until 2019. So first I got into photography and that was back in 2017. Um, I started doing that um, and then I started doing it full time. And I was raving already. I started raving in 2016 and I always had a love for the scene, you know, for the music. And my original idea was I wanted to be a photographer for Insomniac. That was like, that was my bread and butter. That's what I was aiming for. And then um, I I ended up coming back. So I had moved out to L.A., but then when I came back to San Bernardino, um, I reconnected with one of my friends from high school, Psychedelics, which is, I'm sure you guys know, I, I know you guys have had her on the show, too. Mm-hmm. 
And um, shout, shout out, out to Psychedelics. Yeah, she's sick. And um, so I was hanging out with her and my other friend, um, Alec, Death by Fugu. He's a dub, dubstep techno house DJ also. And um, he was D he started DJing around 2019 and or 2018-ish. And so I, I kind of started being around more people that were DJing. Those were the only people that I knew that were like just messing with it. And then, you know, when they would like be done, I would look at the decks like, huh, you know, like, let me see what I, you know, just messing around with it. And I didn't start taking it like seriously until I think it was 2020 or so. Like, I, especially during COVID, like I was just messing around on the decks all the time. I had a bunch of free time, you know. And I, at one point, one of my friends was like, Raina, I don't know if you know who Raina is. She's a techno DJ. So she plays a lot of shows in LA. Is, is that how she, uh, Raina goes by? Raina? Yeah, Raina. Um, uh, yeah, Raina, basically. And then um, she actually told me, she was like, Eric, I think you're ready to play shows. And I was like, what? Like, that wasn't even my my thought process. I wasn't trying to, like, play shows and stuff like that. I was just doing it for fun, you know? And then um, I ended up getting my first gig in... I think it was like February of 2021 or something like that. And then ever since then, I've just been kind of like doing it. And in, in the beginning, I wasn't taking it too seriously. Like I was just doing it, you know, again, for the love of the music. But then at, after a certain point, I was like, you know what? I'm going to hit this hard. I just started DJing. So yeah. I have a question for both of you two. So that now that we're talking about DJing and now that I feel like the three of us in here, we've done our fair share of DJing, like certain locations and venues. Before coming here, uh, just for uh, shits and giggles, I, I was actually going on like one of these job websites and mm -hmm. I searched in DJ, right? Mm -hmm. I was just trying to see like what kind of type of DJ gigs they're out there, right? And uh, and I, I guess we could both agree, all of us are in this room that, you know, we've DJed at some interesting venues or for sure. we've DJed for, for random occasions. For like sure. sometimes it's not necessarily to, for like dancing. It's just like, oh, we need you to DJ like certain places. Like I was on this job hunting website, right? And I put I put in DJ. You know, one of the common DJ gigs that I'm seeing on this board is uh, cruise, like DJing on a cruise, right? What the hell? And um, I was looking at some of these requirements, and uh, and I want to talk about like our our bucket list of where we want to like look places and events or things that we want to DJ at. And I for me. Like, I kind of had, like, an epiphany this morning. Like, oh, damn. Like, you know, like, out of, like, my DJ portfolio, because I've never done this, I would love to uh, do, like, a set or do, uh, like, a week or two, like, trip uh, DJ on a cruise. And I was looking at these guidelines for uh, being a DJ on a cruise, and it tells you, like, you got to be on this cruise for, like, a week. Uh, they have you, like, on this contract, like, going back and forth. And I yeah. was like, damn, you know, that sounds pretty cool, like, to be on this cruise, like, DJ, like, uh, three nights out of the four uh, cruise nights that you're going out. And that's um, like open format, though. That's like to play. Yeah, anything. yeah. So that would be like more open format. I mean, you could definitely play some EDM. Yeah. I mean, but you know, some that, Fisher. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like it's definitely like depending on again, like when you're a DJ, it's about reading the room, like what kind of crowd there is. Sure. So I mean, I'm just talking about a uh, bucket list. You know, I was looking at them like, damn. You know, uh, you know, there's like these EDM events that are happening too. Like there's EDC, the yeah. actual like Insomnia cruise. Yeah, I saw that. So um, I want to talk to you guys, and I wanted to kind of know what your what some of your guys like bucket list in terms of like places, locations to DJ. Uh, like for me, it'd be like a cruise. Like that's something I've never done. Um. I can't think of other places that I think that like I or like, or like it doesn't have to be like a location, a type of set, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, recently, like Robert did a three sixty set. Like I like to do like mm -hmm. a three sixty set. Like, and like, for me, it doesn't really matter. But big like on my bucket list, like I definitely would like to DJ on a cruise, and I'd like to know what you guys' bucket list of like certain locations you like to be at. I think for me, I think a cruise would be sick. Honestly, like like you said, EDC, EDCC. Oh yeah, you know, right. <laughs> you know like yeah, EDCC. EDCC, like on a boat, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like that one would be like pretty sick. Like I honestly, I've been seeing a lot of um, a lot of DJs performing on on boats and yachts and stuff like that. Um, I saw a couple drum and bass DJs doing it, and like it looks like fun, dude. It's it's really intimate, you know what I mean? But like, look at where you're at. What's it called? I seen uh, or I, we were there too. I'm pretty sure when we seen Gatsby on the boat. The oh boat yeah, party. yeah, that was pretty cool. Honestly, I really like the whole experience of being on a boat, being able to see like the sea and like just good music being played mm -hmm. and shit. Like especially it was, EDM, it was different. I feel like it's meant to be like that for some reason. Like, uh, well, 
Homeboy played for some Calvin Harris. And I when I why. met you in the summer. Yeah. 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 So hard, Dude. bro. So fucking hard. Bro. I was like, yes. <laughs> yes, yeah, dude. Like, not only that, right here, but bro. the sun was going down, yeah, bro. It was, it was sunset, like it was beautiful. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. beautiful. Yeah. Oh, he was hitting the vibe. Shout out, guess yeah. For bro, real, like, I think uh, that yeah, definitely cruise would be cool. I don't know about. I think what he did would be cool because we were back on shore like within what, like four hours or something like that. Yeah, it's like a couple hours type shit. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'd want to do like a whole like actual cruise, like a couple of days like, at sea type shit. I think a big. Big ass yacht would be sick. You know what I mean? Just go out for. for but the like, night. you wouldn't be willing to like be stationed like two, three days on a cruise, like as a DJ type shit. If it's EDC, then yes. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But so like, so, so not some open format shit. That's no. to be like, okay, uh-uh. I got it. Because I, I can't. honestly, like, I've heard a lot of stories about like cruises that are just cruises just to people to go have fun with, right? And like. Depending on who you get like roomed next to and shit like that, oh. I heard it's like a very horrible experience like it, oh, just depending okay. like it, it's very hit or miss bro mm-hmm. like yeah. you get stuck next miss. to a karen like have you ever been down. on a cruise or i've not? never been on a no oh. uh-uh. hey, i've never been on a cruise either <laughs> yeah oh, oh yeah like a two three day cruise where like you're staying overnight i've been on a like a ship like that sailed from Hawaii to California, and I was on Damn. there for seven days. Well, did you, you have people next door? Seven, seven days. days? Yeah, seven well, how was the house neighbors? Were they cool? Bro, it was a bunch of fucking military. People. Oh, they were good Navy then. People, they were disciplined, bro. bro. They were disciplined. Yeah. Damn, they're, they're waking you up at five a.m. Like, <laughs> bro, <laughs> I no. realize I'm not seasick, but I get motion sickness, mm-hmm. which is weird because, like, uh, like if I know the boat is small or whatever, and like I can feel the rocking, that's cool. But when I can't feel the rocking, like the boat is mm-hmm. rocking, but I know we're like on Moving. water. Yeah. That messes you up. with my head and then I get uh, like bad headaches and shit. So I mean, I'm hold like, on. Think about this. I'm, I'm going to give you a mind fuck. So we're not, you don't feel us moving, but we're hur- hurling through space at like 20,000 miles an hour. Bro, that's a conspiracy theory. What? <laughs> Earth is flat. That's it. We all confirmed right, it. All right. We confirmed it. Okay, so pop, <laughs> all right, let me ask you guys this. Pop quiz. Is the Earth... Is the Earth moving around the sun, or is the Earth spinning? Huh? It's wait, both. Both. wait, <laughs> yeah, it's both. both. <laughs> there you go, dude. You you confused me for a second. I was like, I whoa, wait a minute, axis, bro. Okay, okay. I went, okay. You see, that was a bonus. I didn't know that. <laughs> there you go. See, that's some shit. Bonus round. We're actually tilted, bro. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah, we actually are. Technically, yeah. Uh, if you, if you believe you in that it. type of shit, you feel me? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't like another one. I don't think I'm DJ at a beach. I don't think I'm, I did you at a beach, bro. I like, played at the beach. I like to play at, like at a beach, like play some like cool stuff, like in the morning or like like during sunset. Like mm-hmm. that'd be pretty cool. I saw it. honestly when I first started DJing. So this is probably uh, I would say like late twenty. Where, late where 2021. Where you DJing? Like we started on record box like right away, or was it virtual? Um, Serato. So I, I started on Serato, oh, and then from there, like I think after a certain point, when you start playing at other places, you start to realize that record box is like industry standard. You know what I mean? Like, so you go from you go from Serato to CDJs and everything's record box. You got to transfer over. Like, and honestly, I feel like there's no hate towards people that use Tractor and all these other things. Like, if you know how to use your equipment, you know how to use your equipment. You know, but if you're going to play at, I don't know, Nocturnal or like any of the Insomniac events, you're going to be using record box. It's crazy, bro, because when we started, Serato was industry standard. At all the clubs. Was it really? Yeah, bro. Everywhere no way. we went, you had to bring... Because at the time, you had to bring your laptop. USBs was uh, going to be a big Only thing. the big festivals had, like, the flexibility to for, like, CDJs, CDJs and turntables yeah, and all, all that. All the other yeah. clubs didn't have that access. All the so clubs. Oh, wow. Like, mixers, or they were using turntables. And with turntables or mixers, you needed a sound card. And everyone just had the Serato sound card. So that just came industry standard for everywhere. Everywhere in Vegas. Like, that was just it. Yeah, even a lot of the you know, a lot of the venues around this time too that did have CDJs, the DJ still like for some reason the software for USB mixing just wasn't up there, so people were still yeah. resorting to Serato, which is like mm-hmm. very laptop optimized, like for DJing. Mm-hmm. And uh, now I'm trying to figure out what year it was it when everyone started transitioning to well, USB say, record box or just much more portable stuff, I guess. Mm-hmm. I want to say like 14, 15, because that's when like more like. Uh, Portable mixer started coming out. Whenever the fucking, what was the first mixer you got for Serato? 
the mixer that it was like mixer. an x2 it was like whenever, a new mark whenever yeah. those mixers started becoming popular is when things started switching i think because uh-huh. then more uh like pioneer started becoming more popular record box started becoming more popular at that time and then it started becoming integrated with the fucking mixers and now like I don't know. USBs are just more prominent now. Like you know, you know, you were like dealing with the SL one box and stuff like that, right? SL one box was that? Oh shit! Yeah, See? No, I don't know what exactly, that is. bro. Like, yeah, so nah. look, yeah. There's a Sur- like, oh, there's a Serato <laughs> phase where people were dealing with the sound cards, and then there's a Serato phase where the controller started becoming more prominent, mm-hmm. and they started integrating now the the actual Serato driver to start mixing. Because yeah, when we when we started DJing, um, like especially with Serato. Like, we had to get the sound card. Like, it was an SO one and, like, you attach that to your computer, but then you attach that to your mixer. Like, it, pretty basically, much a bunch of shit, bro. Basically, it was a focus right, bro. You basically had a focus oh. right that connected into your mixer and that focus right connected into your laptop to have that, like, intermediate, basically. Yeah. That was the software, pretty much, you know? And then you ran, like, the actual program on your laptop, which carried all the fucking music, and then you could see the decks on there and shit like That's that. That's crazy. I, I think... Thinking about that, how much it's changed, even I mean, because I would imagine. Well, when, what year was that when you guys were using that? Like, I started using that. I want to say twenty eleven. Yeah, I started messing around. Started messing around with it. Okay, wow, that's that's a that's over ten years ago. Yeah, bro. Yeah, sir. Been in this minute. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like so, when we had started, bro, like we were in high school, just doing like house parties and shit like that. We started open format DJing at first, mm-hmm. and like. Uh, and you guys started together. Uh, or... Well, like, bro, I knew in high school, like, yeah, we were homies in high school, but, like, we started at different times, for sure, for sure. Wow. I-, I like to think that I was an EDM DJ doing uh, open format. <laughs> there you I'm go. not gonna lie, I was definitely, like, I still like to consider myself sometimes, like, I could do open format. Like, honestly, I, my focus for a long time was just learning how to scratch and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, like, after I, like, I kind of got, like, decent with that, like, I felt like, okay... Now it's time for me to, like, dive into production more. Because, like, even in high school, like, we started producing a little bit. But, like, I didn't take that shit serious until, like, I felt, like, comfortable with just DJing. I don't know. I felt like I needed to get good at one thing first before I could, like, move on to something really. And once I felt comfortable like that, then I was able to be, all right, let's let's pivot into doing something else type shit. Definitely. I feel like that that also applies. Well, that, that applies to DJing. 100% 100% like when whenever I'm teaching people or like people are asking me questions about DJing and stuff like that I always want people to focus on one specific thing and let's say let's say it's just beat matching just fucking line it up you know what I mean like yeah. line it up make sure it sounds good you know what I mean and then after you learn let's say beat matching then then and don't even worry about effects don't even worry about any of that stuff because like you're once your mind is focused on like three different things at once on the decks like you start to stretch yourself out you miss the drop you you know what I mean? Like your your mind's all over the place. So get good at beat matching. Then you got to worry about phrasing. Then you got to worry about the effects, all the different types of effects, what they do, and um, timing of the, of the songs. Knowing your music, like there's actually a lot that goes into being a good DJ that I think a lot of people don't realize. Because like you can you can just put two songs together or whatever, but that doesn't you know make it sound good. Like you have to have the timing like perfect. You know what I mean? So it's like I I, I see what you're saying there. It definitely applies to DJing for sure. I think there was a certain uh, transition and like phase two where I feel like like the whole how you blend songs was like kind of being gate kept, especially when I would come mm. across a lot of DJs when I was start when I was starting to come up and I would come across a lot of club DJs and I would see a lot of DJs like I, I was trying to see that there was like a a certain way to like blend tracks in. And I started mm. noticing like the evolution of like how certain people started like Doing blending it. in tracks like you know for a while. Like, like, for example, I'll give you guys an example, and I, I think we can remember this, me, you, uh, Robert. Uh, like, when uh, Serato started coming, or not Serato, but that company started coming out with those dicers. Yeah. Right? It's like, that, like you know, just, like, stuff like that. that like, oh, now you don't have to, like, beat match, like, tradition necessarily. Now you can blend this song by tone playing another track. Essentially, like, making a cool segue by grabbing the other track, like, manipulating it to make it sound like it's the other track that you're making it, but you're, like, blending it, like a segue. Yeah. And, um, like, the evolution of, like, how you should be blending, like, in these days, like, it's just, like, I, I don't think there's now, like, a, like, a one way, uh, of blending tracks. I think sure. now there's just, there's a lot of different ways. There's a lot of different ways now to execute the blend of 
two tracks, not with the resources yes. that we have on a controller. Mm-hmm. Whether whether it's like echoing out, reverbing out, or sometimes like sometimes like I've seen people do a transition where it's sudden and it comes out clean. I'm like, all right, well, like sometimes there's transition where you gotta do a sudden, like and that like that's yeah. the way. Like sometimes yeah. it's like best way to execute it. But it's, a, no, yeah. Um, I think it's crazy how like. Well, being around so many DJs and like a lot, especially in the very beginning of me learning and I was seeing how everybody else was learning, like I started to see like every person's specific style because everybody does it differently. Sure. Everybody learns differently. Everybody learns from different people. You take little bits and pieces from, you know, the people around you. And like for me watching, let's say my homie David Zakes, he's a drum bass DJ. Like I see, oh, yeah, I, I see him. I see him mix, and like when I watch him, I have no idea what the hell he's doing, but he's doing it. Like, <laughs> and it sounds good, bro. Yeah. He's he's hard. Yeah, I think you were there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was. I, I showed that up for that. Cool. Yeah, he he's fire, dude. And I don't know how he does it, but he does it. And like, he has his own his own you know sauce to it, and I love it, you know. And the same thing with all these other DJs, psychedelics. Like everybody has the same concept, but they get it done differently, and that's all that matters, man. You know what I mean? Everybody has their own style. I like it. I think that shows just like the personality to like their mixing. Mm-hmm. Like everyone likes their own style of mixing. Some people like to draw it out. Some people like to like make an emphasis on like, oh, I'm transitioning right now. Like, and then some people just like to have it clean, make it long. Yeah. Dude, I I went to what event was it? I think it was, I think it was Beyond this past year or two years ago or something like that. Um. I don't remember which one it was, but they had the hangar open. And uh, day one, it was An- Anjuna stage. Um, you know what Anjuna is? Anjuna? Anjuna. It's a, I guess like a genre. Is that like more trance? Yeah, it is trance. It's a subgenre of trance. So the it's first... subgenre of trance? Of trance, yeah. It, honestly, I like, I like to consider... Oh, <laughs> I like to consider trance the sister of techno and then... And Juna is like the indie music of EDM, honestly. I feel like, like you know, when I hear Anjuna, why does that connect me to like Armin Van Buren, like or like a series? Like, don't they do like a, a it, mix series, like Anjuna? Like that's um above and beyond. Above, oh. above and beyond is the ones that they're the ones that created Anjuna, sort of. That's where it's going from. Yeah, oh, right, so it right. it's like it's basically not a not not as hard, I guess, as um as regular trance. It's a lot more mellow. You know, it's almost like deep house. You know, but just it it had it has a trance flavor to it. But uh, uh, to get back to what I was saying, um, day one it was trance, day two it was uh, or Anjuna, and day two it was techno. And on the first day, we went in there to go see. Uh, I think it was Spencer Brown and then Tin Liquor, um, and so Tin Liquor went on after Spencer Brown or something like that, and. We were sitting there watching it, and they're playing this music. And dude, it was crazy how they were transitioning because it it took forever. David, I was with David Zakes, and he was sitting there recording. And then like five minutes later, he's still recording. Damn. And then like I kind of forgot about it, and the beat dropped, and then he turned to me and he's like, "Bro, the buildup was six minutes." <laughs> he was like, "I I was literally recording a buildup for six minutes, but it was." fire dude it was so fire it's like like deep deep ass like techno it's weird it's dope you guys want to hear a sick ass uh build up too one with a bass drop by the, the lonely island fuck that song <laughs> i don't even know what song that is it's a troll song bro. <laughs> Legit, a troll song where it just build up, build up build it's up, on youtube up, it's called when will the bass drop they're, oh. they're making they're making fun of like like the generic like like uh, turn up for what? Like Lil John's actually in it, yeah. bro. They got Lil John in that shit. It's I'm like good. those. It's like one of those SNL like skit type shits. One of my one of my friends' birthdays. Um, he you know he had a birthday party or whatever, and uh, we were at his house, and I went on next DJ, and I just wanted to like mess with everybody, so I was doing house music, but all I was doing was build up. So I was going build ups into another build up, build up oh, into another build up. I did that for like. Six songs and they were looking at me. They're like, "Eric, what are you doing?" They're like, "Drop it already!" Like, and no, I, we just dropped I was the just, tabs, bro. Yeah, what the hell? Cracking up, dude. Like, dude, that's that's that, you funny. know what? Not, <laughs> if I was at an after party and I knew people were on some shit, I think I would have done that. Like, just to fuck around, dude, build up into another build up. Like, <laughs> oh, dude, I'm okay. Hold on, I'm about to say something real controversial right now. James hype. I love James hype. First of all, the 
if you if you've seen, I don't know if you know who James Hy- Hype is, yeah, but hard. he is sick ass DJ. His transitions are crazy. Like he knows how to work around the decks. His his dexterity yeah, is insane. Four channel mixing is Bro, double dropping is crazy. It, it's insane. It's nuts. But I saw him live, and honestly, like he's really good. But if you've seen, if you've kept up with him on Instagram, you've seen all of his transitions. You've seen all of his build-ups. He doesn't really bring nothing new. Oh, you're already, on, expect, you're already expecting what he's going to do in you're, a sense. You've, you've already heard it. Yeah. You've already seen it on you, Instagram. Yeah, you've already seen it on Instagram. Oh, so you're saying and that... So when, oh, when you go oh. to a show and you're like, oh, like, I'm so excited to see him. Like and, but if shit. you watch... Like, if you've never heard of him before and you go to watch him, he's been an incredible experience. But if you keep, keep up with him on Instagram, you've already seen all of his transitions. And, like, that's why I was kind of disappointed. Another thing that kind of disappointed me, too, was... His build, his buildups and transitions are so like intricate and so long that his drops are really short. So he goes from a really long buildup into a like a, a like a decent sized drop, and then he goes into another like crazy buildup. And and for me personally, for that reason, I'm out. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, bro, hey, no, no, say that shit with your chest, bro. Say that but, shit with your fucking but, chest, dude. But mad respect to to James hype. Honestly, he's killing it. He's super sick DJ. Like Disclaimer. again, his skills are are insane. Like I'm not I'm not downplaying him at all. But it's like I I just I, think, I was I don't know. I don't know. I, feel, I understand how you feel about that shit, right? I got like, one for you. Hundred percent understand how you feel about that. Um, but I think if, like at the same time, like. Isn't that what he's advertising? So isn't that yeah. like what he has to show? Like that's true. Isn't that why people are coming out to see him to see that shit? Because I'd be disappointed as fuck if I went out to go see Borgor, bro, and I didn't get to see this or hear decisions or some like one of his big tracks. I'd like, you feel me? Dude. That that would. And if James Hype is known for doing certain transitions and stuff like yeah, that, yeah, you get to see it live, you know. Yeah, yeah, I think like that's why he does that because. Bro, I'd be torn sometimes. Like, it, say you were the ones that made all those transitions and shit like that. You spent all your time, like, making those transitions. And you made a lot of them. And now you're just like, damn, like, do I go out there and not do them? Like, yeah, I feel it. People- I think I think the what he should do... I mean, I'm not trying to tell him what to do. No, what no, no, to do. no, no, no. Hey, James but, Hub, but, you like, listening? Yeah, for real. Your fans are talking. Take it from me. Hey, someone who's never too. played subscribe. a main stage like that. Yeah. All right? No, subscribe. I'm just kidding. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we love you. We love your, you. Put us on your page. Yeah, hey. please, please. We love you. <laughs> no, but... um, uh, What the hell was I about to say? He's talking about James Hub. How do you... Blend his transitions. Oh, yeah, there you go. no, not not oh, not so much about how he should blend his his transitions, but what what he should do is keep some transitions in the vault, so that way, like, oh, you know what I mean, like yeah. do some stuff, like figure it out, but then like, don't put it on social media, so that way people are, are a little bit more surprised when they go and see you live because uh-huh. they've already heard certain certain transitions, but when you pull out the ones in the vault, people are gonna be mind blown because they haven't they've never heard it before. I think that I think for you me, know? I think that's just coming from like a an area of like they're just content with what they got already. But they're not thinking because I, I take I put this like in the realm of uh like specifically like random dubstep DJs. Mm-hmm. Like there's people that only go see like certain dubstep artists because you're like specifically going in person to see them live. Because they're only gonna play like new ass shit, so like I get where you're saying that. Where I think James Hype should be, we all know James Hype could do the transitions. Yes. I think that brand has already has established that. So mm-hmm. I think what you, I think what you're trying to say is like moving forward with the brand is now making those transitions. Like whatever new transitions you come up with, mm-hmm. just keep them like right there in the tuck. Yeah, hush hush. Like yeah, you, you can like, only hear those new transitions if you go to a show. Like 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 I think like. Like I think I get what you're saying. Like James Hype should not treat these transitions as like releases and like treat like the new like also some awesome album campaign shit. You know, like mm-hmm. like get people hooked on a transition. You know, people will get fucking rocking with. And then when people come to your show, hey, I got these five, ten, twenty transitions. Like, mm-hmm. gotcha, bitch. Like I got you guys to come through. Now here's some new I shit. I feel like I feel like one of the reasons why he blew up was because of his transitions. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he's he's a sick ass DJ. Yeah, but so it's but, hard. It's hard to like really. So it's, it's hard to not yeah, release. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Like, like you have to release that kind of stuff. That's hard. what that's what his. I don't want to say that's what his entire career is based on because he, I I watched an interview about him and he's been but, doing this for a minute. But definitely like create five transitions, post two of them, keep three of them in the vault. You know what I mean? Like yeah, sure, yeah. Like I think that would be fire. I definitely I think what you're running and what you're gonna start running into a lot more, I think it's it's you're starting to realize like the game almost like what he's mm. doing to sell his shit, right? And there's a lot of DJs that do that. There's a lot of uh 
people that will, will will already show you what they're doing and when they go live like when they're doing their live it's nothing new it's nothing different right it's, it's the same shit over and over again right but i think that's what makes like finding new people like i like that's what makes like underground like almost really dope or like I that makes you like pivot into like finding okay now i gotta find someone that that's like this but now it's doing it but different it's fresh like, yeah you feel me and that's fresh. what like i think uh after a while you just after listening to the same djs over and over again you start realizing like damn like he, you're cool because you're doing what you're doing and I respect you for doing what you're doing and there's a gar- and there's a guaranteed energy and like yeah th- but now yeah. I need something yeah. different and new and, and there and if you're not gonna give me that like that's cool still do what you do but now it's time for me to like pivot over and find someone that's gonna feed me that that shit that I need type shit for and, sure like I feel like I've cause I felt like that bro like some of my the DJs that I would go out to see I'm like well, ain't nothing new getting played here. Yeah. But like, I feel it. You feel me? I feel yeah. what's going on. You can't get, can't really get mad at it. You know? I'm not yeah. mad at you can't it. Get like, mad I'm at not. Because you I also gotta... have to take into consideration all the people who haven't heard it. You know what exactly. I mean? So they're putting on for people who who like fresh faces, fresh faces exactly. that haven't seen them play. You know? And honestly, that that's one thing that that I've been struggling with as a DJ. I guess I could say is like. You know, trying to keep it fresh, trying to keep it new and finding new music constantly. And for me personally, I have a very specific style and I know exactly what I like. You know what I mean? And and I don't want to pop out and play some like eh, some mid tracks, you know, but there's a handful of fire tracks. Like it's not like I mean, don't be wrong. There's a lot of music out there and there's a lot of music that I haven't heard. Bro, there's you know? like five million tracks being uploaded every day. Wait, for real? Is Some that like an like actual... That. Some shit like that. It's up there, bro. Th- that's another reason why Every I love day. EDM, too. Because honestly, like when you listen to rap, you listen to... What is it? Drake's same album until he re- releases a new one. You listen to 20, 21's new album until he releases another one. With EDM, you have constant bangers. Every that's single day. True. Constantly. Like, And not only that, but it's like... You have house. You have techno. You have trance. You have drum and bass. You have dubstep. You have rhythm. You have all the sub-genres. Like... There's something for everyone, you know? Let me ask you guys something. Because I'm real curious. Because I'm starting to run into a dilemma here. And, like, uh, it's starting to fuck on my head, like, heavy. I found tracks last, like, last year in all my sets. I pretty much, like, had similar tracks in most of my sets. I might have switched up, like, how I played them. And then added a few new tracks in each set, right? But this year, when, like, I played my first set... I was like, do I play the same tracks from last year? Like, oh, it got in my head, like, and, and hey, that, do I need to make, like, does this have to be all new shit? All Can fresh. I not, like, like, remake some shit? So, like, I really legit just started my uh, set list from fresh. And then I just added, like, a couple tracks that I really, really fucked with from last year and just left them in there. But, like, honestly, I got disappointed, like... It was really hard for me to just be like, I'm not going to like play these no more because it's like, damn, like, I know they work. Like, I love playing these. Like, how, when do you stop playing tracks? See, so, so, because I'm, like I'm in tracks? the, yeah, I'm in the same, I'm in the same boat as you right now. And I think this is something that I've realized recently. And one thing that's helped me realize it too is I saw Yellow Claw recently. So I saw them at, where were they at? They were at, um, what event just passed? Recently, countdown. Countdown was it? Countdown. Yeah, they I think were it was. Countdown. Yeah, they, they were it was countdown. countdown. So I went to go see them, and the last time I saw them, <clears throat> excuse me, was at uh, EDC, and they had the fireworks show going or whatever, and I recorded a video. I was recording the whole fireworks show, and in the background, you just see Yellow Claw playing, throwing down like they're they're going off, and then you know I kept watching that video every now and again. I go to see them because I'm like, bro, like I already know Yellow Claw's gonna like kill it. I go and I see them at at um at Countdown, bro. They it was same set, okay. same set, yeah, same same transitions, same songs, same build up, same like everything was like to the T. Because like, I watched that like video. Year apart, or, yeah, yeah, like just apart? about like this the last EDC. No, you know what? Yeah, what? No, uh, oh, it was yeah. it was last EDC, the one in May, I think. Oh, okay. and and they it was like the same same stuff and oh, and in my head I'm like okay, if I feel like this about this DJ where I'm like ah like I already heard this, people feel like that about me, you know if, if I'm playing the same tracks so that's one of the, that's one of the reasons why why for me personally I don't like putting together like um 
like going and putting cues and and setting up a whole thing. I just freestyle everything and I'll mix the same songs differently into different songs to try and keep it sounding different. You know what I mean? But at the same time, like you're saying about the whole music, you know, like should when should I stop playing these tracks? That's kind of what I'm running into too, because I'm like, I'll you want answer, I'll answer it like this. I think that if I have enough evidence to know if like if I'm playing in front of the same crowd again, mm. I'd like I'd like to switch it up. Cause I think if you're a touring DJ and you're playing like like, like kind of like the same routine, but it's a different state, different state. I think you're. I think I. I would probably like stick to like the same. Give you the pass. Yeah, cause yeah. like I, I think as I think it's just us being human beings. I think when we're like more sure about a playlist or a certain routine, and we know it, like like you know, we know the shit works. Yeah. And I think, and then when you want to start adding new shit, that's when you want to like. As I think that's when you, as a DJ and as a human being, you want to now challenge yourself to, uh, not rely on like your usual stuff, and now you want to like. You get, you're also testing, like, your credibility, like, what you think is hot for the crowd, too, like, yeah. at that time. And that's the hardest part, too, like, creating a whole new, like... Catalog of music. And yeah. then just, like, going into it and, like, you're still trying to live up to the expectation of, like, yeah. hey, I'm gonna have a good set. But then you're, like, I've never tested these songs in front of anyone before. So mm-hmm. all, all I'm trusting right now is my vibe, like, that I curated, like... When I was in my room, you feel me? So yeah. that's all I'm trusting right now. And like, yeah. that's fucking uh, like difficult process to just fucking go into, you know? And like, I, th- I think one one thing that's been scary for me um, and something that, I, that I've thought about, I haven't, I haven't really said this out loud. So you guys are the first ones to hear this. Dude, but, it's always premieres at Lisa Temple. God damn, aren't you? <laughs> but um, one, one thing that I have thought about too is, oh, brain fart. <laughs> What's going on? Know, you're, uh, one thing that you're scared oh, about when you're um, DJing, yeah. Oh, that's right. So, so re- I started off the year really strong. Honestly, like I, I'm really proud of myself and uh, people that support me. I I started off the year playing Avalon main stage. It gave me really good set time. You open up or support for? Um, I don't even know their name. They're like the arm. Are something brothers or I I can't even pronounce them. I don't know if it's like Armenian or Ar- Armini or Ar- 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 something brothers. Their logo messes me up. But anyways, um, I I went on just before them, and set was amazing. I so much fun. I I like got new music and I like incorporated it with the older music, and it was fire set. Everybody loved it, and a lot of people were were giving me a lot of really positive feedback. A lot of people were like just you know showing a, a lot of love, and I appreciate everybody for that. But after that set, what I started to think about at my next shows was like, damn, like. People are like talking really highly of me, but can I keep that up? Like, like I don't want to, I don't want to disappoint people. You know what I mean? Like playing my next set, and they're like, ah, oh, like that wasn't as cool. Like I don't want to go backwards. I want to keep moving forward. And so, like right now, my mindset is like, I need it. I, like, I don't even know, dude. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how to like keep that up. You know, because I don't want to, I don't want to disappoint the people that are showing love to me. You know, so it's like I don't know. I'm in, I'm in, in a very interesting spot right now. The the way I I'm looking at it right now is I just gotta trust the process because I don't know how your process is of how you download music and then how you determine whether it goes into your set or not. Hmm. Whatever that process is, bro, just you just gotta fucking trust it. Like that, at yeah. the end of the day, I gotta think about it. Like the I'll break down how I like determine whether songs go in my track. Like so, most of my music comes off SoundCloud, right? So, like, I'll search through a shitload of music, and then I'll like a bunch of songs that, like, I fuck with that make me move or something, right? And then, like, uh, I'll do that for a whole hour or so, and after that, I'm pretty much tired, tapped out to do anything music-wise, right? So, probably the next day, I'll come back in, and then I'll go through the downloading process of, like, looking at all those tracks, opening them in tabs, and then downloading them, right? And then, if I don't feel like... I still have like energy towards it. I just won't download it. Type shit. it and then it goes into my fucking uh, record box crate, right? Into like a folder that says new music. It goes into there. And then I'll scroll through everything and I'll be like, all right, let's, let's make a set now. And whatever doesn't fit the vibe, it's just out type mm-hmm. shit. And then I get left with whatever's there. And then that's my set. Like that's how I go through it. And I just got to, I just got to trust it because so far it's been like, it, it. I'm not doing anything wrong, I don't think. Like, mm-hmm. it's helping and I just, 
I just feel like we're always gonna get that shit like yeah. in the back of our head. Like, damn, am I? It's, just like a, it's a part of the process, man. What's well, yeah. the longest you guys have hold on to a track because of how fucking like good it worked? Just like every time. Bro, there's a track <laughs> that I will play till this day <laughs> because it's a banger. Dog. <laughs> nope. Don't it only gets since 2012. Damn, <laughs> facts. Like, well, fuck you, Hoover, dog. Always in my sense. You got me fired right. if you don't think I'm playing that shit. <laughs> I'm dead. Honestly, I think. Um, one of the one of the songs that I really like playing that I've been playing since like the get is I think it's called like Downstairs by Sid or something like that. Meet me downstairs at the bar. That, that song I don't know if you know that song. I will play that song forever. I I try to like I'll leave it out for like five sets and I'll bring it back in because it's like it's so good. It's such a good song. Everybody loves it. Everybody dances to it. Well, 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 I, well, I do notice if I if I uh, don't want to let go, let go of a track that I've been holding on on a playlist for too long, I'll just try to find like a modernized, like doper remix of it. Oh, <laughs> right. So it's like it's still in there, but it's like now we got it. We got a version. We got an update. You know, we got an update. Like man. like that one song. Um, oh, what song was it? Um, Mommy by. Uh, Chris it's Lorenzo. Like, oh, Chris Lorenzo. Chris Lorenzo and is it Chris Lorenzo? Chris it's a uh, Chris. No, no. Actually, uh, uh, fuck. Actually, nah, bro. I'm I'm a rhythm DJ. I don't know, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a bass DJ, bro. I'm, I'm like, never mind, never mind. I'm a person. I don't know shit. No, nah, but um, <laughs> like that song got burnt out so fast. Like uh, it it, it blew me. up and everybody was playing it, and then like it kind of went away. But then there was a remix that came out and I heard it. Some somebody played it, and I was like, bro, that's sick. And honestly, I think that's a good way of not really letting go of a, of a banger, but like revamping it and making it new. You know what I mean? Let me ask you guys something. And I'm going to say this like indirectly and I hope you guys don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so have you guys ever heard like a ba- like a, a track and you didn't really like it, but then a lot of people started making remixes of it and you're like, damn, this track... All these remixes of this track is fire. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think I like I'm starting to realize. Do you think producers make tracks just for remixes? Like okay, I'm gonna make like I'm gonna make this track and it's gonna be good. But I hope like the my intention is for other people to remix it. Do you I think there's shit like that? You know what? If I could uh, step into this first, mm-hmm. because uh, I have like done like the process of like leaving out my sense for other people to remix. Mm-hmm. I think I have. I wouldn't say ultimately that, but I will say like one of the reasons why I, I do like let stems be free and let people like remix myself is because I do like, want to see um like where that kind of goes. So there will be, like if I do know like if I'm finishing a track and I know I'm not gonna release stems, then I I may I may uh I may work on it a little bit longer just to see like what other possibilities of this concept like I'm getting out mm-hmm. of it. There's like there's certain songs where I release free sense. I'm like, oh, like I, I've done like I've from from my artistic side, I feel like I've done as much as I can. But I I know there's just so much more possibilities mm-hmm. that I could that I could knock out of this concept. But now like I'm content with what I've done with my part, and I want to represent myself with this piece. But I know this piece can be uh more explored by uh getting it behind the minds of other creatives. Mm-hmm. And now I don't gotta be involved because now I already put in my like, I already put in my part of like establishing the, the premise of the concept uh, my way, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think I think I think some people do, uh, some producers do make tracks uh, where it's like okay, yeah, like we didn't we didn't really want to exercise this concept too much. We were cool with what it is because we know that certain producers are gonna come across it and they're gonna make it something else. Not only, but maybe not only something else, but maybe. They'll execute it maybe the the way that we wanted to maybe exercise it some mm. more, right? Like I see what you mean. Because I feel like also to me as an artist, I, I I like to think I'm at a certain level of production, mm-hmm. and I know that like at a certain if I was at a higher production, my piece would be maybe minor, like maybe drastic, in terms of like how it would sound different, or maybe mm-hmm. minor. But I know if another producer with a higher uh higher intellect of production, like. Uh, you know, I just want to. See, I'm. I'm just. I'm a curious person. You know, yeah, and I think that's also. What too, can like, you do with this? Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. curious to sell. Like, what can you do with yeah. what I did? Like, I think yeah. curiosity, like, really is another factor of mine. Where, when uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm determining if I want to like uh make my track like for free stands for other people to make a remix of. I'm just like, mm-hmm. like, do I want to? Do I want to know? Do I want to know? Do I want to fuck around and see what the other possibility? Yeah, I think for yeah. me it's a bit curiosity, like. 
because I'm pretty sure you guys all came around tracks remixes before you've heard the original. Facts. And you're like, damn. If I would have heard the original, I probably wouldn't have clicked on this remix sometimes. Like, I, I see that. what you mean. Yeah, it's true. Like, I like I just I didn't like the song to begin with, so I'm not even going to click the remix type shit. But, like, sometimes I hear the remix first, and then I'll listen to the original. I'm just like, I'm so glad I listened to this remix, bro. Like, I don't know if I would have vibed with it if I would have heard the original at first. Yeah, cause... it's only rare. It's, uh, for me, too, it's, it's been rare cases where... Uh, uh, I listen to the original after I listen to the remix and I like the original more than the remix. It's hard sometimes. That's usually not the mm-hmm. case. It's usually you come across the remix first before the original and you're like, damn, this yeah. is banging. Let me hear the original. Like, it must be banging. Or maybe not be banging, but you're like, you're, 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 you're having an expectation, right? And you're like seeing if it gets fulfilled and sometimes it may not get fulfilled, but then you're like, oh, okay, well, yeah, that, that good, sucks, thing, good thing, good thing this possibility I mean, happened. Like, I think that's the reason why like, it is also me too. Like, uh, I think ultimately yeah. though, the original artist got that play though, because yeah. it made me curious to be. Yeah, like, and you got you got to give him credit too for like putting out the the original man. It's an original marketing for a too, reason. Though. I think just another thing is marketing. You know, it's another form of marketing. Okay, so on the topic of that, just because of what you were saying, I'm happy you said marketing because so one perfect example of somebody who put out a track that is getting remixed like crazy right now is. I don't. I, I can't remember his name, and I wish I knew his name. Maybe you guys will know his name. The dude that made that song, um, was it? Uh, Bring out the lasers. That song. That. that oh, uh, Ray Volpe. Uh, yeah, Laser him. Beat? So look, right, that right, that right. dude deserves a lot of credit for what he did. First of all, produced a banger. He's a legend. You know, and he he ended up playing Countdown, and he got he had like um the whole tour and everything. Everything sold out. For that song, bro, he's getting I, a nice royalty check from that dude, shit. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and and Fuck. you know what? Like he is a genius because when um, well, I I jumped on his page recently just to check it out, just to see like alert. Saw the Christmas version. Yeah, I wanted. <laughs> no, I did not see the Christmas version, but I I I scrolled down to the bottom of his page just to see what his his um his journey kind of looked like. You know, I wanted to see what where he started and like where things started to turn for him. And um, I, I stumbled across one of his posts and it's a post with like 10 different like little it's a carousel post. So there's like 10 different posts in one and it's all remixes of a song, different genres. There's a techno, there's a drum and bass, there's a house. Right. There's like all these different there's even a trans like remix of that song. And in my head, I'm like, bro, that's genius because like you everybody knows that song. Even if you're even if you're not a bass head, if even you don't listen to that, you've heard that song, you know that song. But then you you give them that same song, but in a version that you like in a genre that you like. It's fucking smart, dude. You know what I mean? Like you said, he, he's he's getting cashed out for that, Bro, for sure. I, can I give? Uh, are you working on? Uh, are you started working on music or not yet? <sighs> it, dude, you, you don't gotta around. be ashamed, bro. If it's Damn. no, it's no, dude. Well, look. <laughs> As as an underground cool. artist, once you start making music, bro, can if I could just give anyone advice that's like upcoming, like marketing wise, like I think it's just great to have your uh, have stems available, mm-hmm. like whatever stems you want to share with people that you would want people to like get in there, like that, like you mentioned, bro, like you never you'd be surprised like what other artists have in mind for what you make, and mm-hmm. it might be a different genre, like you mentioned, Ray Volpe's EP, mm-hmm. all those remixes, there's just different uh, variety, there's techno, trance. Uh, house, uh, drum mm-hmm. and bass. There's mm-hmm. just a variety, and uh, the genius behind that, like digging more into that, you know, he, the way they package it is like they're hating every sub market of dance mm-hmm. music. So they're exactly they, they 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 Ray Volpe, the name has managed to make its way to all these crowds, and it, it's all gonna go down back to the to the back root, to the him, source, yeah. which back is the him. title, which is yeah. Ray Volpe, Laser Beam, man. It, it got I got a lot of help from Disciple. Uh, I mean, the, the whole rollout plan. I mean, we. I mean, like you said, dude, everyone was playing that shit like every week, every set, dude, bro. Seriously, Dead Mouse played that shit. Like, damn. Yeah. Like, nah, he didn't play that shit. Oh, I was <laughs> like, yeah, really? Like, <laughs> nah, bro, hell no. That'd be dude. the day, bro. That would be the day Wait. I see Dead Mouse drop some shit. Oh, no, Skrillex dropped your shit. Dro- yeah, Skrillex. okay. Like another thing too. Like, we, uh, Robert and I were talking about it too. Like, uh, I think I had fired up. Like. When people are making a lot of bootlegs or flips or remixes of a track, like what is that, like in producer mindset, what is that saying, like from producers, like so, like you, you know, bring up a good point, you know, like it's just like all these variety of uh, artists and what they could bring, their own style, their own uniqueness, you know, mm-hmm. even goes down to like uh, 
bringing this back up too, like the drip of the artist, like the artist's unique style. Shout mm-hmm. out D-Lo. Uh, yeah, bro. Uh, also shout out Gom too. Everyone, yeah. hey, see, bro, everyone we were talking about everyone it. Everyone was going. That shit out, everybody bro. was. So we have uh, we have uh, someone that we know. His name is Gom, uh-huh. and uh, I want you. I want to know your uh, opinion on this too, because this is. This week, every uh, a lot of people got butthurt about this shit, and a lot of people like were agreeing on this shit. Mm-hmm. So, do you believe that a lot of DJs that claim that they're coming from an artist's uh, perspective, right? Do you believe that they should be more considerate and be more attentive with like how they dress and like how they appear themselves? So, like when they're going out, like doing shows, or like they're, they're presenting themselves as artists. They're doing their shows. Yeah, or well, when they're doing the shows, like I, I mean, I do you think they need to have like that visual identity like pop out for them? What do you, like? So are you talking about like their their like the dress? Yeah, like the, like the, way, the way they dress, they dress like the way like like they that? look and stuff I mean, like yeah, that. I feel like some people want to create a persona for themselves. You know what I mean? Like some people want to, um, you know, be known for something. Like in in the beginning, Novocaine, those glasses, bro. No, right, Nova right. Kane's glasses, like he he kind of put a staple in that one. You know what I mean? There's certain DJs that you know for cer- certain reasons, you know, and, and like um, Rez, her goggles. You know what I mean? She dresses a certain way. She acts a certain way. Um, She's wearing a hat too, right? Yeah, the, yeah. the dad hat. Yeah, She's a hat, and yeah. then um, a part of the underground impulse. Shout out to impulse, the mask, the, mask. the half and half. You know what I mean? And then like as far as dressing and like I think I think you know people should be able to. Um, express themselves however they want, you know what I mean? And like cuz again like if you if you're known for something then you're you're more easily recognizable Thanks. by random people, you know what Thanks. I mean? So like if if Nova Kane's walking around the streets, you know, with those glasses and people are like, "Oh, sh- they oh, my bad, I bumped into the mic." They see him and they're like, Bro. "Oh shoot, like <laughs> like I know that dude's Nova Kane, but maybe if they haven't seen him without the glasses, they would just walking by him." Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But um so I've, seen, I, I've seen Nova King with his eyes. Yeah, I've seen Nova yeah. King's eyes. Yeah, I want to make <laughs> sure. You've seen his eyes? You, you weren't supposed to see those. Just I'm just kidding. Shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Turn to stone type shit. Turn to stone. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it to stone. Oh, my gosh. Holy but, shit. But, yeah, that's what I think. And and I I want to take this and 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 drive this into another, another topic. Something else that I've been thinking about is me as a DJ, like, all right, how about this? So, looking at... All the really, really big DJs, they all have something, right? They all have something that that makes them stand out. And when sure. I realized this was, um, uh, I think it was Nocturnal, this most recent one. Went to go check out Rez and um, I was standing there on the way in the back far right. And the crowd was huge. I, I was honestly blown away by how many people were there, how big the stage was, and like her visuals, the music. Like everything just works so perfect together. Nice. Like her team is killing it, her persona, and like that's why Rez became Rez. That's why she's so huge. And like then you think oh, about nice. then you think about Excision. His visuals are insane. You know the way the way that he is like that that he has his own persona. Then you have Dead Mouse. He has the the freaking helmet thing, and you have all these different people that do different things. Sudden Death with Void. He, that that fool be floating above the stage like doing crazy stuff and you you think about those DJs and they're like at the top of their game like they're the best of the best you know what i mean so it's like what is it that we can do you know for ourselves to make ourselves stand out more amongst everybody else and and put us in that same category because i feel like if you want to be you know the top of the top like you got to you got to do something i mean i feel like Different genres are different. Like, for example, techno is a little bit different because you have Nina Kravis and all these other people that are killing it, but they're just hot and know how to mix. You know what I right. mean? But they're at, they're at the top of their game in terms of techno, you know? But as far as all these other genres, like, if you bring something new and fresh, like, people will run to you, dude. And, like, what can... And that that's why I want to, like, get every DJ to think about is, like, what can you do that's different to make yourself stand out more, right. you know, and, and really push yourself above everyone else not in a disrespectful way shout out to everybody else but it's like you want to stand out you know what i mean so like how can you do that that bro and that's the main reason why like i bring up that topic of like how you show yourself when you're at a show bro like how you how you your presence at a show is what people are going to remember you or don't remember you you that's true that's like and you know what the easiest way to get people to remember you is by what you're wearing sometimes you know and that's why Mm -hmm. like that's something you just got to think about like the first thing you look at 
at someone, bro, what are you looking at? Uh, you're not dropping, just looking at their body, face, yeah. bro. They're looking. You're looking at, at all you this them. Here. Yeah, yeah, them. You feel me? So you gotta just really I'm looking be at the eyebrows. Yeah, all, all of that it, bro. shit. Like, bro, did you shave today? <laughs> like, bro, looking at your nose head. hairs. That, like, that's what I'm saying, bro. <laughs> like, I'm like a doctor, bro. I'm like going in there, looking at your ear, like say ah, like. Bro, bro, look, if, I'm, if I'm determining if I like something, that's what I'm doing. Like at the end of the day, I'm like, right. okay, do I like all of this? Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, I do. See, and like, and, and even hygiene, bro. Like just yeah, like just simple shit, like hygiene. Like even like this. Like I'll go back to the stigma. Like so, the whole thing about this whole week is most. I like to think that most people agree that when you're an artist and you go out, like you should have like some sort of like visual identity that is unique to you. But mm. I think unless you're a musical god, then who gives a fuck? Yeah, right. you could dress. You could dress like Steve Jobs. Exactly. <laughs> it, don't, it don't matter. You know, unless like, you're Kanye, you feel me? 